$230,000 is being put to work on the Soufria playing field and the $150,000 Clifton Road Rehabilitation Project is complete. Welcome to this edition of National Focus. I'm Jana Hector. And I'm Tasia Flosak. Stay with us for details of the headline stories and others after this. If you can believe this, why can't you believe this? Uncle tried to make me have sex. Some mothers don't believe their own children when they say they've been sexually abused and they don't report it. Remember, if anyone asks to see or touch their private parts, touches them inappropriately, shows them or forces them to touch one's private parts, has sex with them, shows them pornographic material, or deliberately lets them hear or see the act of sex, then it is sexual abuse. Believe your child and report the sexual abuse. For more information about child abuse, contact these agencies. This message brought to you by UNICEF and this station. Thanks for staying with us. The rehabilitation of the Clifton Village Road, which commenced in October 2014, is now complete. In September of 2014, the nation's finance minister and the prime minister, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, contributed $150,000 towards the rehabilitation of the Clifton Road. GIS News was on site last week with Honorable Member of Parliament for that area, Reginald Austrey, who explained the nature of the project. And that road must have been like 30 or 40 years old. And so we, uh, so from September, October, we immediately uh, began construction work uh, using local contractors, a young contractor, um, Kent Lamoff and Felix Vital. And we began the rehabilitation of that road to include the drainage, the road surfacing, and the road widening. Uh, what was mainly a one-lane traffic, it was improved to, in most places, to accommodate two-lane traffic, and the drainage on both sides were necessary. Um, that project was completed sometime in February of this year. And uh, you can see for yourself the quality of work that was done. And you can well imagine the, the aesthetics and, and the upliftment that it is, this village got uh, based on the rehabilitation of that road. The road was officially completed in February 2015, pending a few minor finishing touches. Honorable Austria indicated that some improvements have also been done around the Clifton schoolyard, including some fencing. The Honorable Parliamentary Representative says there are plans to intervene in other areas of the community. And we also have cottages as part of the constituency with its own needs and challenges. We have Savant Pie. In fact, um, I hope that before the end of this financial year, we can begin rehabilitation of one of the, 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 the roads in, inside of the village of Savant Pie itself. That has been a, the project has been approved. We're just waiting for the funding. And then we have some work to do in Lago. So it's a long constituency, uh, but we need to touch the lives of everybody. Honorable Austri, who is also Housing Minister, says government's interest does not rest on only infrastructure, but on the development of its people. In terms of education, in terms of sports, we have our Lamb of Playing Field. We also have our basketball court in Savant Pie in terms of sports. In terms of housing, we spend millions of dollars in our constituency improving the housing conditions of, of, of the people. Um, transportation to Pete Secondary School from here, you can well imagine students having to live here and go to the PSS to school. Uh, we have been able over the last um, last two years to make uh, bus fares, uh, buses available to take the students to school. And even students attending Dominica State College, you will well appreciate having to leave here and go to Roso to the State College, um, the expense it causes a parent. And so we have put mechanisms in place to ensure that we can support um, in a tangible way. And for the last two years, we have been assisting the students going to Dominica State College uh, with some bus fares, some subsistence to help them to get to school. He says projects like these simply speak to the Prime Minister's unshakable determination and aggressive foreign policy. The world is facing a challenge and a crisis, but our government, the Prime Minister, has been able to go out there and to raise the necessary resources to make these things happen. And all this work you see going all around the country, it's not from taxpayers' money per se, that is money is negotiated by the Prime Minister, whether to soft loans, 1%, 2%, or grant funding from our friends from Venezuela, from China, Morocco. And, and these are the friends, and this is what our foreign policy is about. It's not to go to a country to wine and dine and to dance, but to see how they can assist us in our developmental thrust. And it's been working beautifully, it's been working excellently, and I'm sure as long as the Dominican Labour Party continues to be the government of this country, things will continue to happen for Dominica. 
a project to ensure the safety and stability of both the Sufria Primary School and playing field is currently underway. At a tour of the Sufria constituency last week, GIS got a first-hand view of the project which will ensure that the school and playing field are not flooded during heavy rain. So this drain is going to collect the volume of water that is coming out at the top of there to protect the school. Because when it's raining, it causes a lot of damage. So we has it as um, six feet wide by four feet, so it's going to collect enough water. Well, the project, it's really good. It's going to lift up the place and plus the, what it's going to take to collect the water to, uh, to avoid the area, to avoid the area from flooding. And it's, it's a good project. Principal of the Sufria Primary School, Erickson de Gallery, is also pleased about the developments. He speaks about the benefits to the school. Certainly the school welcomes this um, latest development. It will um, no doubt help in protecting the school and its compound. What we've seen over the years is due to heavy rainfall, quite a lot of water went into the schoolyard causing a lot of damage. So with the advent of this wall, I'm sure that it will help to keep the water out, thereby making the school a safer place in terms of um, um, disasters which are likely to occur. As part of the rehabilitation, a new bridge will also be built to access the playing field. After this project is complete, we expect that the playing field will be in top shape. We don't expect the, when heavy, we have heavy rains that the, 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 the banks of the, of the drains will be overflown anymore. So we expect this, this project to now enhance the playing field and to really give it a, a, the gloss that it has in the Brooklyn playing field. We also tend to, to, to um, transfer the, the, the basketball court and also construct it right there on the Brooklyn playing field. So we'll have this area, meaning being a, a, a playing area or the sporting area in, in the entire St. Max, because we only have one playing field in St. Max. So that area will, will, will now be a, a multi-purpose area with, with basketball, volleyball, you know, lawn tennis, football, cricket, rounders, and, and that's, that's a plan for the, for the Brooklyn area. Government is spending over $230,000 on this project, which is expected to be complete in June. Great things happen when people come together for a good cause. This is what the people of the Seeds of Life Ministry have done for June Richard of Marigot. June Richard and her family, originally from the community of Pebush, were blessed with a new home in Marigot thanks to Second Chances, a charitable organization of Seeds of Life Ministries of Pebush. Kimani Seja brings this report. Great things happen when people come together for a good cause. This is what the people of Seeds of Life Ministry have done for June Richard of Marigot. June Richard and her family, originally from the community of Pebush, was blessed with a brand new home in Margot thanks to Second Chances, a charitable organization of Seeds of Life Ministry of Pebush. Senior pastor of Seeds of Life Ministry, Pastor Zavi Foster, recalls how it all started. It all started one day. Some of the members of a little church we just started, Seeds of Life, were visiting the poor. As fetish is visiting people and they came across this lady here and they told me I have to come and check on that, see what it is when I came. We decided we are going to build. Not knowing how they could get assistance or materials to build, the mission began. Director of Second Chances, Alexis George, recalls all they had was a willingness to help. Our group has a lot to be proud of. Just to be... Just to begin to think of January 2013, ladies and gentlemen, when Mr. Benjamin Paul came to us in regards to the living condition of this wonderful family. After hearing, we immediately started the process by going to the roadside to clean and beg. And so with just $4,000 in June of 2013, work began. This is the situation that prompted the church to action. This young mother of eight, physically challenged and unable to fend for herself or her family, was forced to live like this for quite some time. 
Because of this condition, June Richard was not able to keep her entire family together. However, her new home will allow her to have everyone under one roof. The work of Seeds of Life Ministry prompted the assistance of others in the community. Volunteer Builders, Silver Lining, Ross University, Courts Dominica Limited and several others came on board. On behalf of Courts Dominica Limited, um, Unicoma, we would like to just extend, you know, our heartfelt everything that we, what, what we saw in that photo said one thing. But when we came there, we saw a totally different thing. And trust me, tears came to our eyes. And we gave the basics, which we think would assist her. You know, as time going back, I'm sure other persons will come on board and give her something. We gave her the beds. We gave her the cooker. We gave her the, um, the refrigerator and, of course, a living room suite so she could be comfortable in her home. The government of Dominica also contributed in excess of $30,000 during the building process. Honorable Prime Minister Rosa Scarrett was there to witness the event. A government's responsibility and duty is not only about roads and buildings. It is about ensuring that the human aspect of development is cared for in a meaningful and tangible way. Honorable Scarrett pledged the support of the government of Dominica in future ventures of Second Chances and added to the existing support of government, the Honorable Prime Minister had even more good news for the family. In addition to the support which we received from the government, for the government agencies, the Office of the Prime Minister will provide to you from, the, from May of 2015 on forever, seven hundred dollars every month to assist you in a to assist you with your daily upkeep. Richards could not find the words to say thanks. Keys in hand, June Richard is certainly grateful for her brand new home and this old structure which represents now her past serves as evidence of great things that can happen when people work together for a common good. For GIS News, Kimani Senja reporting. Thank you, Kimani, for that report. You're watching National Focus. Still to come, the Dominica Solid Waste Management Corporation will soon be accepting again tires at the Foncoli landfill. Did you know the Caribbean Court of Justice is two courts in one? The CCJ has two functions, an original jurisdiction, which deals with your right to move between CARICOM countries freely and your right to move your money and your business. This is the basis of the CARICOM Single Market and Economy, CSME, and the revised Treaty of Chagaramas, and an appellate jurisdiction to hear appeals from courts of those countries which decide to use it as their final court of appeal and no longer go to the Privy Council. All CARICOM member states who have signed the agreement establishing the CCJ are members of the CCJ. Welcome back. Junior Achievers Dominica and the National Youth Council have formalized a strategic alliance to harness their strengths towards youth development in Dominica. A memorandum of understanding was signed between the two on April 28th, signifying the start of an initiative which was originally conceptualized in 2012. The Junior Achievement Program, established here about two years ago, has three core focus areas financial literacy, entrepreneurship education, and skills for workforce, while the National Youth Council has as its core focus the empowerment of youth in Dominica. Natasha Yiloy Labad, Executive Director of Junior Achievement Program, explained that the collaboration will focus on five key areas. They speak to providing the youth of Dominica with hands-on experiential programs for entrepreneurial education, financial literacy, and workforce readiness or work readiness. 
financial assistance, seed capital, and mentorship to youth-led enterprises by, as you know, we are not a bank, but the idea behind that is to facilitate young persons to be more bankable and in places where they can access, you know, crowdfunding and other sources of international aid to be able to be the organizations to facilitate that to increase opportunities for the youth of Dominica to lead productive lives and to increase and improve the capacity of our schools, particularly youth serving organizations like the Youth Development Division, the 4-H's, all the agricultural clubs, the environmental clubs, all of the um, youth clubs that um, Mr. Jaisai and his team here at the NYC has actually been focused on increasing the movement and mobilization of young persons around community initiatives. And we are also looking at preparing our youths, particularly those placed at risk, and we s emphasize placed at risk, um, to meet the existing demands of our economy and, of course, the workforce that we have um, in place. And lastly, to improve the enabling environment for budding child entrepreneurs at primary and secondary school level. The chairman of the Junior Achievement, Dominica, welcomes the collaboration, saying that both entities will benefit as the focus is essentially the same. Partnering with NYC, very good or an appropriate um, opportunity for us because coming here, for instance, help, helped us to be able to reduce our operational costs. And for this, we are very grateful. And of course, Junior Achievement and NYC, the focus are basically the same. While um, Junior Achievement is focusing on children, those of school age, pri even primary, secondary, secondary school age, and, and students who are just ab about to leave school and, and enter the job market. Um, NYC also look at look at youth and even those you know probably on a, on a broader scale, those who have already left school. But the aim, I believe, for both Junior Achievement and NYC is to see that young people are able to make a contribution. President of the National Youth Council, Jaisaya Benoit, calls the occasion historic. He says this collaboration fulfills a key aim of the NYC, which is to create sustainable partnerships in the quest to help young persons develop themselves. The council is there and established to represent a greater need. That is the need of the youth of this country to grow up with a sense of what it means to be businessmen and businesswomen and what it means to have that competitive edge in a job market that is very much more volatile than previous generations. Whereas my generation went to school knowing that what you had to do was study hard to get a job, this generation is faced with even persons who have attained tertiary education finding it difficult to get employment, not only within the Caribbean but also further afield. The Council thinks it is quite fitting to rely on existing expertise that have been tested and proven the world over. That is to speak of the Junior Achievement Program, which with the skill set and the knowledge products that they have developed, we can ensure that we can pass on as many of those knowledge products to the schools across Dominica to empower these young people to go through the process of creating a company from investing in individual shares to deciding on your, your product of choice and also your market of choice and then going through all the rudiments of business. Under the Memorandum of Understanding, the National Youth Council and Junior Achievers Dominica will share office space and combine their resources. They are also ideally located near another important entity for youth development in Dominica, the Dominica Youth Business Trust. The two entities are bringing together capital assets of $148,000. And the Dominica Solid Waste Management Corporation is set to resume operations at the tire section of the Focoli landfill on Thursday, April 30th, following a fire on Friday, March 13th, 2015. Manager of the Sanitary Landfill, John McLawrence, indicated to GIS News on Tuesday that a contingency plan has been developed to prevent potential incidents at the landfill. We are reopening the tyres section. 
Now you know that we had the fire spread to the tires area and that is where caused most of the issues that we had. So in trying to mitigate that problem so that it does not happen again, we have a short term, medium term and long term plan and we have our short term measures already been put in place by the construction of a new cell for the burying of the backlog of tires. Now the backlog of tires is because we, since that fire on the 13th of March, we have not been accepting tires on the landfill. So we have now prepared us a space. As you can see, there are trucks going up and down, getting soil from that cell to the tipping face. McLaren says the corporation has enforced stricter measures to increase the efficiency of the sanitary landfill. The corporation has been working tirelessly since after the Friday 13th fire in March. We have tried to organize the metals, white goods and derelict vehicles area in a more orderly fashion. As you can see, we have signs where people can clearly see demarcated areas where you can dump your galvanized only, your derelict vehicles and scrap metals and your white goods which consists of old fridges, stoves, computers, e-waste, etc. Now, this is not going to be like before. We're going to have it very much more organized. We're going to have an attendant uh, who you should follow instructions from when coming to dump those type of material. She provided further insight into the corporation's medium-term plan. The Dominica Solid Waste is embarking on some research into our the use of our tire shredder which has been there for for some time we are going to see how we can experiment with it and use it use the shredded tires on the landfill itself for the roadways and access routes on the landfill and from there from the results we will see if we can use it on a broader scale partner with the public works department and use it on a broader scale the manager noted that as part of its long-term plan, the Dominica Solid Waste Management Corporation is looking into the exportation of shredded tires. The general public is advised that the tire section of the landfill will be open this Thursday and Friday to receive tires. The Dominica Solid Waste Management Corporation is also soliciting increased cooperation from the general public. We like to encourage the general public to practice recycling as much as possible so that there is less waste coming to the landfill. The landfill is not a dump and the landfill is not just an area that hanging out by itself. There is a management system, there are rules that the public are urged, is urged to follow and follow instructions from the landfill attendants. Um, there is security, there is a landfill manager, there is an office which you can call to get more information if you do not understand how the process of disposing of your waste should go and also if you want more information on where the different types of waste should be disposed of you can always call seek information and I just want to urge the general public not to bask in your ignorance and don't listen to hearsay you can always call solid waste to find out what's going on and always get the right information and that's the English segment of the news. Marcuson St. Louis is next with the Creole highlights. Hello tout le monde. Bienvenue à ce nouvel Creole. Non moi, c'est Marcuson St. Louis. Premièrement, ministère des Comms a collaboré et puis ministère Éducation pour développer le secteur ICT en Dominique. Parole celle-là sur le ministère des Télécoms, honorable Kelvin Daru. Nous, nous ne pouvons pas partnership et en partnership et ministère de l'éducation. Plus tu nous savons, les mondes allent à l'histoire. Ils ne peuvent pas aller à l'histoire en bitin qui 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 c'est en priorité pour le gouvernement ça. So les 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 finis histoire de yo 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 vivre Dominique. Yo ça tapé en travail hot 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 ça les les histoire. Et puis industry ICT là, il n'y a plus discipline. Mounsa a une autre histoire. Et puis, les gens vivent dans le monde. Ils ont fait le travail. 
you say only for a, a company, for private sector, for government. If you, you say tough, tough employment at the uh, bit of you are a study. If you say about bit, so we can strengthen ministry, information technology, if you ministry of education, for we focus on priority areas for we are a study. If you can do you, let you view it, you can tap employment for the area of salary. On a nouvelle département de drogue Dominique tient un workshop qui mettait attention à ces situations de drogue et puis alcool en Dominique. Parole celle-là, sorti au chef du département de drogue Dominique, Mademoiselle Jacinta Bernays. Nous avons regardé comme um, issue alcool et puis warm alcohol qui affecte le monde. Um, comment la drogue qui affecte le monde. Nous ne pouvons pas aller loin, nous ni maman, la famille nous qui affecte pour en bas alcool et puis les autres drogues comme marijuana et cocaine. Mademoiselle Bernice fait parole qui a formulé un plan pour adresser cette situation là. Nous le faisons un plan pour assister nous à travailler nous. So, ça nous ça nous fait nous créer ces evidence base. So, ça puis ça nous a en, en ces communes là nous ne pouvons faire plus. Um, il y a un challenge. Puis, là où aller à ces communes là, où passer ça peut monde pour pour ça travailler et puis pour assister. So nous cas dit l'école, um, famille et puis am um, commune en général, société en général, ni pour faire ni pour assister en cas de travail ça là. So là nous n'ayons plan, nous nous avons point plan et puis nous avons fait travail nous nous c'est en plan que ni am um, community action, bagay comme marketing and sponsorship. Il y a des policiers pour les drogues, so nous savons ça nous ça fait. So nous, les stakeholders, là, travaillons pour nous, pour bah nous avoir um, avis uh, qui est avec ça nous avons point. Puis nous, en Drug Prevention Unit, nous avons fait un um, peu nous. Et puis finalement, ça fait où le gouvernement bâti Miwai et puis Boulevard dans le constituant de Kachakou, c'est un bon compliment pour le constituant de la. Parole, c'est la sortie de mon parlement, honorable Ian Pinad. Là où on est dans la boîte actuellement, où est massive, si on ça, et ça même, c'est un compliment au village là. Les gars, avant, le village là, c'est un petit chimé. Euh, c'est moi qui dis, nous faisons chimé pour les nous donner donkey et puis os pour, pour marcher, il est temps à petit. Et puis actuellement, nous avons un beautiful boulevard là, nous avons un plus beautiful boulevard à l'entrée de Dominique, et puis de la pointe de Souffre et Scott, c'est le plus de boulevard à Dominique, et puis le gouvernement qui, qui, qui fait les massifs projets. Ce so, monde la pointe et le monde Souffre et Cacha Kougalion, bien content, et ça nous a fait à la pointe, à Souffre et Constituency. Merci, madame, ça c'est tout pour nouvelle en créole pour à présent. Non, moi c'est Marc Fousson saint Au revoir. Coming up next, your tip of the day. Wash your hands. I am Adora Toussaint, health educator from the Ministry of Health. Proper hand washing protects against the spread of many common illnesses and germs. Wash your hands often with soap and water, or you may use a hand sanitizer. Remember, clean hands save lives. Protect yourself. A message from the health promotion of the Ministry of Health. It is a natural desire to expand one's vocabulary as a bigger supply of words increases the chances of succeeding in your studies, career and even personal relationships. Even if you don't see yourself as a brilliant public speaker or highly articulate person, it is important to develop skills of using the right words under different circumstances. Three ways to do that is to read, read, and read. The more you read, especially novels and literary works, but also magazines and newspapers, the more words you'll be exposed to. As you read and uncover new words, use a combination of attempting to derive meaning from the context of the sentence, as well as from looking up the definition in a dictionary. 
And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website, news.gov.dm. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash gisnewsdominica and follow our Twitter at gisdominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. From all of us here on the GIS News Desk, I'm Jana Hector. And I'm Tasia Flosak. Thanks for watching and join us again next time on National Focus.